Hey everyone, welcome back to another uh, coffee with Kittle. I'm actually not drinking coffee right now. This is tea. Julian is joining us today and he is going to show us a pretty awesome uh, method tutorial on using more photogenic tools and the vectorizer tool and like being able to take an image or a graphic or something, turn it to a specific color and then actually add color back into it. It's kind of, see, I don't even know entirely what to call this tutorial yet, uh, but it looks awesome. And just as a sneak preview before I, before you get in and share your screen, I want everybody to know watching this, you're knowing firsthand. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say this or not, uh, but we will have multicolor vectorization coming very soon. So if you have an item or an image or whatever that has multiple colors, when you hit vectorize, then it will have those colors. So <laughs> yeah, that's going to be pretty wicked. Um, that's so, exciting. So that's your free hint, secret, Kittle announcement. Um, but yeah, Julian, let me go ahead and put your screen up. And we're actually going to make this full screen. So don't worry, guys, if I do this. Uh, we're still here. See, I can I can bring us back really easily. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm too big. <laughs> I can bring us back like that uh, super easily. I can also uh, bring like, but, but let's do it like this because I want you guys to see this. So uh, go ahead and explain what the tutorial is and go ahead and just dive right into it. Cool. Well, you can already see I've been really experimenting with this method for a while now. And yeah, basically it utilizes the uh, image vectorizer, which came out, I think, last month it hasn't been out something like that yeah yeah but ever since it came out i was just blown away with um a lot of stuff you could do with it and uh and then i've been trying to expand on it a little bit to get more um specific results you know okay so the method essentially is going to uh vectorize your image and this method will help you kind of preserve a little bit more of the details in your image um, and then it will give you two layers to work with. So one of them is like this top line work layer. Oh, okay. Right. Um, and you can change the color of course because it's vector. And then there's a bottom layer where you can change the fill of it. Oh. Yeah. So then you can do, you know, you can change up your colors or whatever. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta walk us through that. That's, that's <laughs> cool. There's a couple of steps to it, but, um. I'll walk you through, and I think we should be fine. I'm gonna get all this out of here. So basically, I start with, you can start with any photo you want. Um, there'll be a little bit of a process to it, but it, it basically it's all the same. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that dog picture back. So, and this is all within Kittle, which makes it even better. Right, yeah. So I'm gonna get our, get our boy all centered up here, and then we'll do our background remover. Go ahead and get all rid of that, all that yellow. Okay, so we got rid of that yellow. We have them in there. So the first thing I want to know is when you use the image vectorizer right away, you'll notice something happens here. So we have our image. <laughs> but like I was saying before, the method I'm going to show you preserves a lot of that details because you can see a lot of the um, detail in the face of the dog. You can... It's, it's pretty much gone. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of detail from the sweater left over. Right. Um, and you'll understand how you can control a little bit of that. But yeah, you know, it's a, it's a solid color vector as well. So, you know, if we wanted to change the color, of course, we could do that. But I'm going to show you how we can get a more controlled result. Okay. Okay. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste. So we're going to have two versions of this. Um, I'm going to hide the top layer. And I'm going to activate the bottom. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this our bottom layer, our fill layer, like I was showing earlier. And basically what I do is I bring down the uh, brightness, the contrast, and the saturation. And we get close to that near black image. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to get that top layer back. And then what I'm going to do... What I've found gets the best results is I'll turn down the saturation and then I'll kind of lower down the contrast just to make it a little brighter. Yeah, because I want, because like I said before, the point is to bring, uh, to preserve as much of the details as possible. 
especially with this image where it's it's a black dog you want to yeah. put as much as the features as you can so then i'll also bring up the brightness a little bit and you'll you you'll have to play with this depending on your image it's it's all it's it's going to be different right your image yeah. and you can also bring down the blur a little bit just to kind of give it a little bit of sharpen yeah that's actually a little hack you can make it sharper by turning the blur down yeah uh-huh uh-huh yeah so that, that'll help kind of um, you know, if you have hair, especially that'll kind of help, um, crisp up the, the image so you can get more of that detail once you go through the process. Okay. So this will be a good starting point. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, um, I'm going to hide my background layer and then go back to the almost solid black. And I'm just going to download it as a pretty high quality PNG. Okay. Got it. Okay, so now we have that. I'm going to do the same thing with the top layer. Okay, so now I have both of those. All right, so we can bring those back in. After they've been downloaded, you'll have the two layers, of course. You'll have the one that's near black, and then you'll have the one that we kind of brightened up a little bit, brought down the contrast. Basically, what this is doing is it's given us a new starting point, right? Yeah. And I'll show you kind of a before and after once we do the process. Um, okay, so we have our layers. So I'm not going to size anything. I'm just going to import them straight into the artboard. And then I'm going to hit image vectorizer on that near black. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to give us a solid black vector image. Great. So that'll be our fill. And then before I get to that one, I can actually change the color of that bottom fill layer. I could just change it to white. And you know what? I'm going to name this. That way, <laughs> that way I'm organized on here. So I'll name that to fill. So that'll be our back layer. I could even give it a little bit of a border weight. Mm. So that'll help us a little bit too. Okay. So now with the top layer. Now... Let's go ahead and hit image vectorizer and see what we got. Okay. So we got close. Uh, I will make a point that sometimes you have to do the process a couple times to get more desirable results. Uh, but basically the process is the same, but you don't need to do uh, make another background layer. You already have it. So if I wanted to get more detail out of the dog, I can go... And um, kind of undo everything. And then if I don't get a super desirable result after doing a first pass, if you bring up the contrast a little bit. Ah. Yeah, those areas that are pretty close to white, you can imagine will be out. transparent once, once you vectorize it. Yeah. yeah. But essentially, you know, the main point or the main process of this is you have to render it out. You have to bake the image with those adjustments before you use your vectorizer. That way you can get those results. Mm, okay. Yeah, so that's essentially how this process works. So if I wanted um, to use that, I would have to, again, download it. Okay, so I'm going to bring back in the one that I just exported. So this okay. is the one with the adjustments that I just made just to be able to... Uh, bring a little bit more detail in the face. So now if I hit image vectorizer, there. Oh, yeah, it's much, much better. Yeah, so now we have a lot of that detail. Um, so, yeah, so now we have a lot more of that uh, detail in the face of the dog, which is, you know, why we exported it initially and did our thing. So, yeah, so now from here, of course, we can go and we can change the color of our... Uh, uh fill. Yeah, I see. Yeah. 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 So that's essentially how the process works. Now, let me give you a little bit before and after. I also like to group these that way you don't have to do anything crazy. Then, you know, it, it operates as one single layer. <laughs> right. Right. Um, okay. So now let me bring some of these, um, back so you can see the difference here. I think this was the, yeah, this was the initial. Okay. So we got our uh, collection of pugs, mm -hmm. fine collection of pugs. 
Um, okay, so essentially, the reason why this method works the way it does is because... Let me reset this. So this was our original layer here that I'm moving. Yeah. So when we did the image vectorizer, you'll remember the face, there's not a whole lot of detail to the face. Yep. And that's just because of how the image is is set up initially. Um, if I go back, there we go. Yeah, so it, it all depends on like the bright areas of your image. Whatever is shadowy usually will get kind of... Um, brought together and those will be the dark elements of your vector image so after we do a uh, a pass with the method that's what this one is here if we were to hit the vectorizer on that like we saw before it gets closer with those results but we still don't have quite what we need and then the thing is the way this tool works if i were to go in and bring up the contrast there and then hit vectorizer. We get the same result. So it's still it's still basing it off of the original image. Exactly, exactly, and that's why this this method is what I've been using to be able to get results like this one up here. Yes, yeah, so you're. I mean, yeah, it's it's telling Kittle that you're inserting a new image. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's adjusting a, a current image that's not. Yeah, it's not new. It's already been added, and you're just adjusting a current image, and you're create you're you're creating a new image to then vectorize. Exactly. Yeah, and and then from there, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. You know, you can, um, if you wanted to, you can make this into a complete vector element. Um, you can download it as an SVG, and then you can import that back into Kittle, and then it acts like a normal yeah. element. <laughs> so then you have two colors in an svg to play with yeah that's, yeah yeah which then you can put into a mask and you can use them in different ways which i've experimented with that too so you can see a little bit of the i've done a little ex bit of experimenting so this one for example so this was uh, the same method i figured like okay what's a good way uh what's a good application for this process well let's say you wanted to make a t-shirt for your family or whoever, if you're doing print on demand, um, maybe you can make um, custom t-shirts for people with their family. Well, so I went and I found uh, a man, a woman, and a child on the in the photos tab so I can try it out. So it's, yeah, essentially you can put in the, yeah with the process, you can go and you can do each person and then you can put them in. And yeah, so I uh, did that with the people then I turn them into a single SVG and then I use the mask tool and everything so I can get this result. Nice. So, you know, then at that point, you can see how that can work as like a t shirt design. Yeah, that's super cool. I mean, yeah. that, that opens up a lot of options, a lot of endless options for this cool kind of stencil photo grunge style, kind of. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I don't know the exact way to describe it i i know the the type of <laughs> style when i see it um yeah but yeah and and um you could do the same thing with um landmarks and um mm, yeah that's cool. like uh you can see this monument valley one here yeah this monument valley one here so i took a picture of monument valley it's in arizona I, if you guys ever seen it or been there <laughs> but um yeah you could do the same thing to where you uh render out your background layer and then your top layer so then you can have that is the, a ne very neat idea yeah, yeah that is super cool yeah so it's really helpful and of course you can use pretty much any picture i've even tried it with uh pictures straight off of my phone <laughs> i took a picture of myself to see how quick and easy I can get it done. And yeah, this one here on the left, of course, that's me. <laughs> that's <laughs> nice. One of my friends. But yeah, you can see how um, you could essentially just take a picture of just about anything and vectorize it pretty easily. I think there's a lot of capability in using this method if you're looking for something specific and you can't necessarily find it. Like, I mean, I really like your the monument, the the canyon kind of one just really sparked my 
interest because yeah like you know we have a lot of state part looking illustrations in kittle you know but yeah. there may be this one thing that you took a picture of like i was just in iceland and you know oh yeah not a ton of all of the same mountains in iceland as actual illustrations you know in kittle or wherever you might get your illustrations from yeah um, but i could just grab that photo and as long as I compose it correctly with all your photo adjustments and things like that, mm -hmm. I can make a graphic that, that I then can use for like a logo or a t-shirt or something. So it's just, there's so much capability. You have no excuses to not make cool things for <laughs> right on demand, right? Yeah. And, and another thing I'll say is there are some times where, like I'll use this example, there are some times where the image, like maybe you want to preserve uh, detail on the hair but if you do that then the face will be blown out while well, using the masks and 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 um, another layer that kind of preserves the face a little bit more you can bring back the detail in the face while still preserving that hair so, oh, so you're just you're adding kind of layers on top of each other of the same image yeah yeah okay <laughs> wow that's really neat man you could really construct some pretty detailed stuff with this mm hmm yeah, and for for someone like me, um, of course, I like to do the the print on demand stuff. Um, so this could help a lot with that if I want to do specific, like I showed you with the landmark stuff. Um, yeah. I also do um, independent film work, and uh, I can just really think about ways that I can make movie posters or graphics for stuff like that out of this method watching you do it now i'm more comfortable trying it myself i didn't want to try to explain it to someone with just watching you do it because i was kind of following but then it was like how did you yeah so anyway i hope people are going to try this out and have a ton of fun and uh maybe they'll they'll show us in the discord what if they use this method oh nice yeah here's a, a handsome man i found on the internet no. <laughs> of course <Nice>. tobias <laughs> so and I would say added a nice little pirate hat. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, it's a it's a pretty powerful tool. Uh, the image vectorizer really blew my mind when I figured out um, the kind of capabilities. And of course, adding this extra um, method onto it, it's pretty cool. And and based on what you were saying, if there's um, more coming with that, I'm oh yeah, pretty blown away with those Kittle devs. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. They're they're all wizards, and uh, we've got some really really cool, uh, neat stuff coming. Well, Julian, thanks so much. That was that was super cool. Um, and just hopefully everybody gets some 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 value out of using that method because I think again, between AI, Kittle AI, um, between our illustrations templates, and now you have all of these other ideas that open up for just straight up regular images. I mean, your your accessibility to Killing the print on demand game is about to skyrocket. So, I'm, I'm my best thing to say here, I guess, would just be just take your time and do some experimentation yeah. uh, with this process. It, it each image is always going to be a little bit different, and there's there's still a lot of flexibility you can get out of different images. But yeah, just mess with the uh, image adjustment uh, panel uh, for your images. Mess with that, do some exports, mess with the vectorizer so you can kind of get a hand of, yeah. of how all that works if you want to get those results. Sweet. Awesome. Well, Julian, thanks so much for taking the time. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, I, I love being able to to let other people do tutorials. It's a it's it's a great it's a great time, especially for me. So uh, all of you watching, uh, definitely let us know what you think down in the comments if you're going to try this. And then you can join the Discord where both Julian and I am all the time uh we'd love to see what you're doing we'd love to see what you're doing with this method practically show us the shirts or the graphics or whatever you're doing with this uh, and don't forget to subscribe it takes like one second just hit the red subscribe button if you haven't already and that way you can know when we upload more videos so thank you all so much for watching and we will catch you in the next one bye yeah thank you now if you want to see other tutorials using Kittle, I have these videos here on my right that I know you're going to enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming videos and features and things like that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.